Let's bring in Dollar Tree CEO Gary Philbin this morning to uh, talk about, uh, Gary, this unprecedented shift of uh, household, uh, especially meal budgets, but all kinds of household budgets moving away from out of home to grocery. It's good to have you with us. Thanks for the time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on today. I, I, we can only imagine uh, the volume increases you've seen, but can you talk about overall what this past couple of weeks have looked like? And are you beginning to see any easing in the shortages of some key uh, uh, either disinfecting supplies or paper supplies that we're all familiar with by now? Well, good, good questions. And uh, thank you, Carl. Let me just uh, start off by first a uh, shout out to our teams at Dollar Tree and Family Dollar Associates at uh, it really risen to the occasion on something that uh, is hard to plan for. And as we've uh, really managed this thing in real time, have uh, responded in uh, great ways in their communities and with their neighbors. And I think uh, what you've called out on the essential sides of the business, uh, you know, we've used words like unprecedented, but clearly the customer was shocked very quickly to get the things that she needs into her home to protect, clean, hand sanitizer, and now when you think of all the kids and a school, there's at least 10 more meals being done at home than there were before. So the uh, impact to the food business as well. Uh, I would say this, our, our supply chain has been stressed. Uh, clearly, as our trucks show up to stores, we probably have enough for a day or a day and a half. But more is coming. And we've called out, we have a billion dollars in the pipeline somewhere. Our uh, vendor partners have ramped up. It's coming. It's just that it's not going to be enough for the next few weeks, but there is enough coming overall. And, and so we're working very hard with our supply chain and our distribution centers. We have 24 around the country uh, working seven days a week to get product to the stores. I don't want to make your, your peak traffic uh, hours any busier than they are, but what advice do you give to shoppers who want to know when the best time is to arrive at the store and hopefully uh, just come in just after that delivery of, of certain categories? Well, good point. We did call out for our senior population, for anybody else at risk, the first hour we would like to dedicate to those folks. And uh, kudos to folks who have uh, responded to that. Uh, but I think as folks are shopping, listen, the levels on shelf are going to get better and better as we go through this. Uh, I was in a store last week, and our customer, who seemed to be a bit in a panic, you know, our store manager said, listen, we have two that you can take today. We have more coming next week on the truck. I see that already. And just that conversation reduced the angst of that particular customer. So I think as our levels across the country, and we won't be the only retailer that sees an influx of more goods, people will have confidence that they can go and shop any day of the week and more times. But this will be a building process over the next several weeks. Uh, Gary, it's Jim. Uh, Gary, I'm a little confused and perplexed. Uh, when you were on last, uh, Dollar Tree was really good. Family Dollar, not that good. Uh, the last week of March, you were minus 19.4 for Dollar Tree. A family Dollar starting to do better. There's other stores that comp solid 8.8%. But what went wrong at, at core Dollar Tree? Because uh, Dollar General reported some pretty good numbers, and minus 19.4 is not like you. Well, keep in mind, Jim, we really caught on to a positive comp on the quarter, which was a seven-plus comp for Dollar Tree. What we called out was the change in foot traffic that we saw in the last seven days uh, that we wanted to make sure everyone saw. So I don't think anything was wrong. I think what we saw the customer respond to at Dollar Tree was, we have those essential items she needs, paper towels, cleaning, hand sanitizer. We certainly saw that spike that got us to that plus 7%. I think the reduction in traffic is really two things. One of it, with that kind of spike in demand, we just ran out in some stores. Mm -hmm. And then I think, think uh, secondly, appropriately, customers are taking the shelter in place seriously. And that's some of the reduction in foot traffic. I think a family dollar... We have a broader expanse of consumables that people need. We have more in store. Uh, we have more in the supply chain. And that's some of the difference between the banners right now. And listen, people are very focused on taking care of their families. We have a holiday coming up Easter. I think folks are not focused on that like they typically would. And that's some of what Dollar Tree is seeing right now. But I would say this, you know, we're in uncharted waters here. But I'm convinced Dollar Tree has always responded when we've had other events and effects on our business. 
Uh, we know that we sell everything for a dollar. Our customers know that. And uh, they'll be back as soon as they get out of shelter in place orders uh, when the right time comes around. But, but I think just to follow up, Gary, it's Sarah on that point about some of the negative numbers in this report. Can you give us more color on what people are actually spending on? Are they buying anything except for absolutely essential goods like sanitizers or foods? Are all discretionary items sort of falling at this point? No, I think it's a, it's a good point. Obviously, people are very focused on the essentials as they, as they should be with what they have to stretch their budgets to. But it's interesting. Uh, customers with kids at home are much more buying anything related to education, which we have at Dollar Tree. Our craft section is going through the roof at Dollar Tree as folks are trying to find ways of entertaining. Same thing at Family Dollar. In addition, at Family Dollar, we have lots of items you can go outdoors with. So my, my sense is, as families get together, uh, you know, they're gathering around and grilling out when possible and using the grills and chairs to keep their social distancing outdoors. So people are navigating this in different ways. They're at home much more. They have to stretch their budget. Uh, but I think as we go through this, they're finding the right way to maintain their neighbors uh, within some social distance. Their families are obviously at home. So, you know, the shock right now is to the customer. I don't think any of us thought at the beginning of March we'd be here. I think folks are navigating the new reality and I think over time, folks will figure out how they continue to do the things that uh, create uh, fam, uh, both family and neighbor events at the right social distance.